Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegel Guy. I'm making an electric foundry which I'll be sharing with you soon and I needed to make some resistance coil heating elements. So I came up with this really simple jig. In a moment I'll be showing you how to make this and then a little later I'll be covering all the relevant maths. Starting with the resistance wire, many folks go for the nichrome but I opted for canthal wire which has a good performance reputation. Canthal coils can be quite pricey, but the wire itself is surprisingly cheap. Measure off the amount you need and add this to a separate spool. This can then sit at your feet. There's no fancy spool holders needed at all. Next you'll need a metal bar that matches the internal diameter of your required coil. This one is 8mm in diameter and roughly a metre or 3 foot long. You'll need to drill a small hole at one end. A couple of scraps of wood are required to form the body of the jig. Size and shape isn't important. These get screwed together, but no glue is used. A nice straight hole is drilled through both blocks, and this hole matches exactly the diameter of the bar. It's a snug fit, so a little oil might help keep things moving. The blocks of wood are unscrewed, and the centre hole is enlarged in one piece only. This hole needs to be big enough to give a little clearance to the finished coil. In my case, I've enlarged it to 12mm, giving me an extra 2mm all round. Now is a good time to decide where the top of the jig is going to be, and mark this for convenience. Using an ordinary hacksaw blade, a small, shallow groove is carefully sawn into the front piece. This should be just large enough to accommodate the wire. Don't go too deep or too wide. Everything is then screwed back together and you can see I've also attached a simple base. This can be clamped or screwed down for stability. And believe it or not, that's it, the jig's finished. The canthal wire is fed into the small groove and the only tricky bit is pulling the wire through. Long nose pliers make easy work of this. The metal bar is then inserted and the wire is hooked through the hole in the bar. On the other end of the bar, a drill is attached and this turns nice and slowly. As it turns, the wire grows taut, gets looped around the bar and forms a perfect coil. The wire coil then slowly pulls the bar through the jig and eventually you either run out of wire or bar. The coil can then be slipped off the bar and it's completed. Just remember to stretch the coil before using it. This is a very simple jig, but I'm sure you'll agree it produces excellent results. The maths associated with the coil can be a little more daunting. There's three formulas commonly used in electronics and physics, which might be of use to you. But before that, there's certain information that we need. The first is voltage, and this is either the mains voltage in your area, or the voltage that you're going to be applying to the coils. In the UK, for example, mains voltage is around 230 volts, though this can vary slightly between regions and it's certainly worth measuring for accuracy. The next requirement is current, and generally speaking, the higher the current input, the more powerful your heating coils will be. But you must be sensible and careful here. In the UK, for instance, the average mains outlet is restricted to 13 amps. Now personally, I would not max out a device at 13 amps. I prefer to reduce the current down a few amps, and as 10 is a nice simple round number, that's what I'd personally go for. Your situation and circumstances may be different, so please be careful with your choice of current. The next requirement is the resistance of the wire you're using. If you've obtained appropriate resistance wire, this information should be made available to you by the manufacturer, usually measured in ohms per unit length. The final requirement is the inner diameter of the coil. This is simply the size of the bar that you used in the coil making jig. From this information we can work out the length of the wire you'll need, the likely power output, the resistance of the coil and the number of turns that will need to be made. For maths lovers, here's an example of the calculations and doubtless from this you can see what's necessary. If you fancy an easier time of it, have a look at my website here. There you'll find an online calculator. 
select whether you prefer metric or imperial measurements and then simply type in the relevant data. This will work things out for you nice and easily. So there you go, a simple call making jig and a free online calculator. And I think we can call that a finished video. I hope you liked it and found it helpful. I'll be bringing you my electric foundry very soon, but in the meantime, look out for my other videos on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and feel free to send me your comments and questions. So that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching.